G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. This is an edited live video. And today I'm gonna to do a painting with the three primary colors. And of course, which I better get ready as well, black and white. So I'm using French ultramarine, permanent linserin and Indian yellow. So I've got a yellow, blue and red. And I'm gonna try and get all the values in our sky, some hills, limestone hills with greenery growing on them and some water, two-tone water, a bit of a turquoisey water going. And let's hope we can get everything mixed with these colors, all right? So come on over here. Now these, that's me put her on a brush, okay? Now I finally got hold of some of them. There's one there. There's a one and a half inch and a two inch blending brush. Now I've got the two inch blending brush out of the packet and I'm gonna blend in this video today just to show you how these brushes work and I've obviously got my putter on a brush you know how that works so these are what I've got my hands on you can message me on Facebook if you want to acquire some of these brushes okay and um, do not comment on the video here below because this video over time will become dated and if you message me on Facebook they're available until they're available, until they run out, I suppose, until I can't get them anymore, <laughs> like I did it a few years ago. Anyway, so I want to do a sky. I've got some craft paint. <clears throat> this helps the, um, what do you call it? Uh, instead of painting blue straight onto your canvas, my canvas is primed. Uh, this helps it glide and sit down a bit softer in colour. I'm going to have my sky here and I've, I've masked up there where I don't want the other colours to get interrupted. Why? So nothing's on there yet. I can give it a bit of water, just a little bit of water in the sky area, just so that flowing white, I'm picking up the flowing white now, just so that can guide across the canvas instead of dragging. Now there's no retarder in this, I've got just the three primary colours and black and white. So this is a craft white that I'm using. I call it flow white, but it's craft white, poster paint, student paint. Now I've jingled and jangled that right into the tooth of the canvas everywhere. Now I'm gonna stroke it with the tip of the brush here. Let me put her on a brush. And this helps get all the big thick glugs out of there. Okay, and I can hear it tearing across the tooth of the canvas. It's doing a beautiful job. Now I'm just going to wipe it on a rag, of course. <clears throat> and back down here on the palette, we've got our French Ultramarine Blue. So we'll get some of this going. Now we're gonna to have to be doing a lot of mixing because we've only got three primaries. I'm not a fan of this blue, but I'll give it a go anyway. And we're gonna get the sky dark at the top and lighter at the bottom for our, what do you call it? Water-based landscape. So I'm crisscrossing this all around where I need it with this Put her on a brush. Just put her on a brush. If you want to paint the way I paint, it's a bloody good brush to have. Now, do excuse me, I can't look at all the comments and answer anything, so you just have fun watching the show and talking amongst yourselves. Now there's the sky. It's very thin and spread out. I'm just quickly grabbing a bit of white here just to get the horizon paler. So I'll get a bit more there actually. I want the horizon paler, pale than the top. Boom, 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 boom. There we go, and now, now I'm massaging it in. There's our sky. Now what I will do, I'll bring you down here. Now we're coming across to some titanium white from the tube, okay? And now that brand new blending brush that I'm sourced. I'm going to grab some fan brush to pick this up. Now I'm not going to do too many clouds but I just want to do something so you can see how these brushes work okay. And this paint 
the colored paint that I put on the craft paint isn't thick and gluggy, okay? So this paint now, see that? See how it's there, you can see it. It's not like you're putting it on and go, where the bloody hell is it? And it's turning blue. So I'm gonna scallop these clouds, try and get something over our heads. Now, some people fall in the trap of doing clouds like this, all these sort of sad faces. If you're doing that, all you need to do is bangulate the edge up a bit, boom, 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 boom. And that's something you, and that end there. And that's something you can blend. Now watch, what, pretty much what I've done here, okay? Now I'm going to get the corner edge of there so I can keep the bottom nice and flat, reasonable, come across wherever, wherever, wherever. And I'm pushing it into that paint there, nice and softly. I'm gonna wipe the brush. This will be another blending brush for me. And now I'm gonna get the top. There's no retarder in here, so I've gotta work a bit quick. And I've gotta blend that up. See how it's blending? Blend it up, blend it up to the sky. Don't blend the bottom down to nothing because you'll lose the illusion that it's over our head, okay? Get up there. There's a beautiful cloud. Okay, look what's on the brush. You gotta wipe it. I want to get some more unpolluted white paint just to put something else with that cloud because it's all on its own. So I might put something here. There we go. And just so as I can show you, I'm going to leave the bottoms there. Look at that. Something there. Blend that top. Turmoil, twist it. Look at that. Beautiful. No, there's no scratches in my sky. No scratches at all. It's a beautiful brush to blend with and it'll take practice, okay? Now, we need, I'm just gonna get another brush to save time and I'm gonna get some more white now. The clouds are done, but normally, so as they're not flat, get some more white and where you need it, add a bit of yumminess to the darn things, eh? So, Probably some more glistening out here somewhere. Boom, buddy. Oh, yeah. And you just want to sit that down into the cloud. Don't blend it all into nothing again, okay? And this is adding perspective, dimension. It sort of gives them a 3D look. And as I always say, it just adds bullshit to your sky. It's beautiful. Watch this. I call it the yumminess. And if you can get your yumminess done right, there we go, come down here a bit. Look at clouds and sort of get an idea how they can look in the sky. And if anything, they kind of look like, see this dull area, that's where I put some yumminess. They kind of look like, put that in the water, they're going over our head. They're not flat, it's not like a flat curtain of clouds against the back of the painting there. It looks like they've got dimension and they're going over your head. It's what you want to achieve. There we go. We can muck with that till cows come all the way home, but we're done with that. We're done with the sky. Beautiful, simple sky. Now that's just French ultramarine blue and white so far. I was going to turn the camera off and ready for the next bit. Now I can pull this masking tape off because we're done with the sky. So let me find the edge of that. Okay, now there's a ridge of paint where I took that masking tape off. So get your finger and just lightly squash that ridge of paint down. And because we're working with wonderful, amazing acrylic paints, we have the opportunity to blow dry this for our next color. So I'm gonna blow dry that. All right, there is a distant mountain in there, so I better get that in there. So I'm gonna use my French Ultrine Blue and some permanent Alinsarin I've got here, or Alinsarin Crimson. Hopefully they do the same. And I wanna make, um, I'll put that in there. I'm just gonna grab, I'll grab a filbert. I'll get a bit of water down there. 
now we've got red and the blue on the palette here. We're going to get the blue and start mixing some permanent linsen just so we get that distant flavour. There we go. There we go, look at that. Now I can and I will add a bit of white to it. Oh no, I won't because that made it purple. Wow. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay. It's easy to watch this. It's got atmosphere between you and it. All right, so it's just here. So I'm not looking for realism in my tutorials, but sometimes I achieve it. And when I feel that I'm achieving it, I'll run with it, eh? So this is just scrunching it in there with this little filbert down there, because I've got some rocks there along the horizon line there, limestone rocks. Now I found a picture with a lot of these elements on Unsplash there, and I thought that's at least something. I was going to do a, like a night scene, but I also wanted to do the um, three primary colour videos, so I had to choose an appropriate painting landscape for using the um, primary colours. Now I'll just brush that in, and then I'll put some detailing facets in there by just adding a little bit of white here. See there? Mix it so there's no surprises. It's just a little bit lighter than that value there. And we just want to simply add, this is just like this, some, maybe a bit brighter than that. Just all over it here and there, it's panning down. Hey Reese, can you grab me a bottle of water, please? Water Just the um, room temperature one. Now the water is coming from here down there's a couple of stones there and it's going to change value and come onto some sand so i've got to try and work out uh, i've got to mix i've got my red and i've got some more blue uh, i'm going to keep using that filbert to be a mixer because i've got to get like a brown if i can or something dark Because if I put some light in that, it's going to be purple. So let's put a bit of yellow in there now. It's probably going to go. I've never mixed the three primaries together to see what colour you get. Oh, it's done that, eh? Yeah, we'll get a bit of a... I'm trying to get a brown going. Hopefully. <laughs> and there we go. How's it looking for colour? That's all right. Now I want to get some of this. I'll leave a little bit dark, but I want to get some of that lightened up for some um, limestone colours. Okay. And I want it a bit wider than that again. So I'm going to grab some more craft paint I'm just going to use. So I'm still using the primaries there, okay? White. Get over there, you. I want to get the real limestone colour going as well. That'll do it. Yeah, that's it. So I've got three grades of brown there now out of our primaries. Move this out the way. Now I'm going to make me watercolour. So I've got some blue and some yellow. Get out the way there, Mr. Brush. I'll use me putter on a brush to mix this up. Now I'm going to mix up some bluey turquoisey colour. Hopefully we can get some of that going. So I've got some, I'll use the yellow here and this green um, and me white. Some <clears throat> white. It's 
very green. How do you get the, there we go, <laughs> come on, come on. Might need a little bit more blue. See these putter on a brushes, they're good for a lot of things. You just, well, especially for me, because I film, you don't probably need it because you're not filming. Now that's not really turquoisey, but um, that looks like green gray. I better put some more yellow in there. I'll do it like a greeny water. Depends what blues and yellows and reds you use. Now, I want this water about here to there. Now, let's see how dry that is, how wanting that canvas is. It's very dry and wanting. So I'm going to wet it a bit and jangle that to me rocks. Get it to where all me rocks are. Wow, it's not very um, turquoise, is it, eh? I'll cover that rock up. It's gonna be rocks there. Now I'm just wiping that brush. Now I'm going to grab some of the French ultramarine blue down here. And while that's still a bit wet, I want to get a blue colour within that water. There we go, got it. Now we're going to add a lighter value of that water. So we're going to just grab our, well first I'll wipe that brush. I'm going to grab this white now and just pick up a little bit. Oh, that's gone off blue. Where's my camera? Oh, there it is. I'm just making a lot of value of this, just so we can go into the sand. So we're going to get this and just scrumble it next to that paint colour there, merge it in there, and it's going to come to the sand, okay? Merge it. These are good quality paints. Look how they're working. They don't look dry and chalky. They just look bloody great. That's what I love about them. Why I use them? And I might get, I don't know, don't have to, but you can get dollops and pockets of lighter values up in there as well. But that's the water. See how this brush does a lot of blending? Now I want me sand colour. Where is it? There it is there. I want it white as white if I can get it. Very white. And this is going to merge with that green now. Get this colour on first before you destroy it with green. And then you can start kissing it into the green. Get a bit more. And this is pretty much the, the sand under the shallow bits of the water there. Can you see what I've done? Hopefully you can. All right, I think I can put that brush down. And a limestone. Now we want some limestone. Uh, where are we? I want some darker colours first. So I'm going to use this brush. Darker elements, because it's shallow and it's rock. So that value there, and 
where my big rocks are coming down, I'll probably have some darker bits in the water as well. Just, I want it a bit darker actually, not too bright, so it'll sit. So we're going to put some darker stones and rocks under the water there, just like that. I'm just using the, the, the darker colour brown that I've mixed up. Probably come along here. Maybe something a little bit out there. I'll see what's that doing. It's pulling the paint off the canvas. So I've got to try and sit it on there. There we go. Well, I made brown. Oh, got to be happy about that. Now, where me limestones are going to come out from the water anyway, I'm going to get dark there. There we go, dark, and that'll be all feathered up into the lighter colours. I'll be interested to see just how this um, primary colour paint works out. You, you can choose whatever you want to paint. I've just chosen this, but you can choose a field or I don't know. Now try and keep that in cahoots with the horizon. How's that looking? That'll make sense when I put all the... Um, where are we? That's coming down here. That's going to come down here. And I'll add the darkness in the limestone rocks once I've finished, and then I'll highlight them and whatnot. All right? So how long have we been going for? Half an hour. Now I want, I want to paint the limestone rocks in there. So I've mixed that color up that you saw me do before. I might need some more white. I'll grab some over here just in case. Well, I'm not just in case, but I am going to need, I want all that limestone. I'm going to use this to map it in. You grabbed me a water, didn't you, Reese? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. I should have given it a dry, I will later. Now I want jingle jangly rocks, like the sort you get at the beach, the coast and there. So I'm gonna just place them on. I don't care if we get nice big thick brush strokes in this, it's art. Uh, there's gonna be some way out there in front of this inlet. This is like an inlet, obviously by the picture. Um, but we, we needed all that dark underneath them. And then we're going to scatter some in between them. You know, like when I do foliage in a tree? Well, we've got to try and do that with this um, rock mass. Now I'm going to try and come down here. Get all that up there. And just block it in. These are limestone rocks. We get them a lot on our coastal beaches here, Trig Beach and Waterman's and um, Madam's Pool and all that down here in Perth. A lot of rock stuff like this. Build that up now. Now this is in front of those ones way out there. Keep that in cahoots with the horizon line. Because from about here, it'll have like grass. I wanted to use the green, mix up the green with the prime colours to get some grass values in this painting so you can see how to mix some grass up as well, okay? Now I want to get the darker colour that I mixed up. I will just quickly wipe the brightness off that brush and get this darker colour. Let's hope I've got enough of that, otherwise I've got to mix more of it. What did I use? I used the lens and crimson and the blue and a bit of the yellow and we made a brown. Some more there. A bit more red, I think. 
There we go. Got some more there. Now this one's going to be dark because it's going to house the um, the grass. So I'll, well not, yeah, grass, shrubbery, uh, June bushes, sort of things you get in the Junes, you know. So if you're just joined in the live, this is a tutorial using just the three primary colours and obviously our black and whites. Because where this dark is, that's where the, the, the June growth would be on. You need it to sit on top of some darks to pop, I feel. How's that looking? A bit weird. Same on this side here, maybe. Just pull it down into there, wherever you want it. Bit up in here. That's pretty much it. I'm going to have to get on the other side. Just so as I can um, get the angle of the dangle on my brush. I want to try and get... Uh, yeah, there we go. Some of this growing up there. <laughs> growing up there. Painted up there. And then I can dry this. And um, put the other colours on. Where else do I need a bit? Oh, I want some... Putting this, oh, why not dark? Come on, get it dark, you. Coming from the bottom. I'm going to dry that bright colour. Okay, let's go again. I've got to have some black with this anyway soon. Just want the bottom dark. I want that in front of there. I'm trying to put things in front and behind everything now with this darker colour. I'll try and straighten up my horizon line now. I did go a bit stupid with that. And we get some of this darker colour where it's in the water, jangling up the rocks there and dividing something up there. Now I'm putting the darker values within me rockery. <laughs> rockery. I think I'm in a pottery class, wouldn't you? Uh, get up here and we'll have some shadowy bits jangling around here. There we go. How am I looking in there? I'm just looking in the monitor to get some perspective on everything here. There we go in here. We could probably get some of this. Just tracing up there as well. Try not to make it look too factory though. Now I'm just going to quickly stop frig digging around there. I've got to get some black into that because it needs the black. Where did I put the black? There we go. I'm going to get some black into there. So I'll just put some black next to that dark brown that I mixed up. And I'll quickly dry that again. Okay. Getting the black, mixing it with some of that darker brown that I mixed up. Look at all those colours, all from the primaries. Red, yellow and blue. Now see, we've got to get the depth. Leaving the brown, but just getting the dark there, because when I add the water surface on, We'll get some sort of popping going. Within that, there, it's kind of, I think, ish.
I'm chiseling the tip of my brush so I can get some nice shadowy bits coming down here. washing that just washing that and now we've got to get the bright color that we made just to highlight little bits here and there so let's give that a bit of a spray bomb give it a good old mix on your palette before you pull it up onto your canvas and we just want to highlight now it needs more white I just checked it on the side of the thing there it needs a bit more white This is just craft paint, this white I'm using to brighten it and um, to tint it and it's very weak. Now, I want to get, this is like washed limestone. It's really, it's got that white, pretty much white colour within it, you know. That's what we get here in Australia. I don't know what you get where you all live. How's that looking? It's sort of doing the job. If anything, we want it just white tainted with that, with that colour there. And out here, again, what I was doing with these rocks, just kind of indicate what's out there. We'll have some grass coming down there. I want to chisel this up and get something there. How's that looking? That's doing the job, I suppose it is. That's all I can do. Now we want... I want more white in it, Marty. Yeah, more white. More white, more white. Here we go. I'm just winging it here, you can see. I'm not really doing anything amazing. Now I might get some of the titanium white. The really good stuff. Not his swore then. So yeah. It does, I don't mind if it gets a little bit tainted with that really light brighty colour there that I mixed. A little bit of paints in the way, eh? I like that. Just just stuff's everywhere all on the palette. I hope you know one heard that. Now we're gonna get some come on white, 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 why can't I get any white on here? Just highlighting. Let's get our green going. How's that looking? Is it looking limestoney? Oh, I suppose. Okay, now we're going to make some green. So we've got our Indian yellow and our French ultramarine blue. Now let's work out what colour green we want. I 
we'll get a reasonably darker value and then we can add the highlights with some more yellow. I reckon that's quite green. Now I better give that a bit of a wet so it'll transfer and I'll just quickly because I'm on this side and I'm right handed I'll just quickly get some where the dark paint is better dry it first okay now we want to find these dark bits and that's where you want the green to sit on let me get on there there we go because if you set it on the bright colours, it um, looks like it's floating. So I'm kind of just leaving it at the top of the dark colour. See what I'm doing there? This is just the June rock bits of greenery that grow. Oh, a bit. There's not too much on this side. And I can let that dry while I do the other side. So I get this a bit dark. I'm just mixing it first. Just bear with me a minute. And we're going to come down the mountain with some, leave some darks in there. And what I'll, when, once I put this dark green in there, I might put a scallop of some of the limestone just shining through as well, just so it looks like there's little bald spots there. So get all this mapped in there like so. That's why I wanted this dark. Don't like this green, I don't know. I'll see how it looks after the painting's finished, but I'm a, I am a fan of the... Um, Forest green. Just dribble down there a bit. Tell you what, time flies when you're trying to paint within an hour. I'll edit this down anyway for the replay so it's not so long and boring. All my live tutorials, the chat is only there in the live. Once the live is finished, the, um, the comment, the chat section will be gone. Okay, just sort of let you know that in case you want to come back and see what you might have said or someone said, just to let you know that that won't be there. Okay, and I'll quickly do, like I said, put some limestone bald spots in there before I highlight it. Not too much, just a bit where I can find something there. That'll do, just because I want to. Okay, when we highlight it, it just adds more razzmatazz. Now dry all that which I'll start on that now. So I need two brushes. I need my little scrumbler and one to put the water on. At the front there, oh no, I've lost all my green. I'll have to use that green there and a bit of white. So where's our white? We'll grab some white. At the front, I just want the water lacing on to the, um, uh, what do you call it? The shallow spot. How is that? That'll do it. So I'm using this brush to put it on. Work out, I want me water sort of coming here, there. Okay, so I'll put it on and scrumble it back into that paint. This is just my line. I'm going to get white, tainted white, and make this more realistic. 
Oh, where's my scrumble? I need that for this. I don't want to scrumble it too much where it can um, peel the paint right down. I've just got a little bit of that green mixed with it, with that white, and I want to bring this probably there like that. I want the, the bottom edge of it reasonably sharp. And now I'm just adding um, water movements within that. It's supposed to be a big boulder here, but I'm not going to have time to do it. I don't want this to go too long. There we go, we'll scramble that up. And we can probably put a bit more of a break there. Get them nice and long and pull them out, pull them out. Now I'll add some white, just so as that's looking like, um, what do you call it? Um, water. Just get the, I'm using a... Um, Now, twist it and let it make its own natural line there. Stop a little bit, okay. Leave the bottom half and pull the top, but pull it in cahoots with the horizon line. Okay, that means the horizon line's going across the painting, so do these brush movements. Don't bring them around like that. You want them parallel. I'm going to do it quick because it's very dry. Parallel to the painting, okay? How's that looking okay? Oh yeah, just. Uh, we'll get a bit more going here. So I've got to do just a bit at a time because it's very, there's no retarder in this. I'm used to using retarder. But we'll get by without it and see we're just dancing that back. We've got this under the water as well, this sandy colour. <sighs> Make sure this paint's reasonably inky, this white. And this liner brush just helps twist, boom, stop. Get blended in cahoots with the horizon line. Pull it back, pull it back. Get that all the way, yeah, there you go, look at that. It's just lapping onto this, well not even lapping like that, it's even softer, it's just oh, oh, oh. come on, come on, come on in cahoots with the horizon line, keep them out there level pull it from that angle and then start straightening it up. That's what I feel you need to do when you're doing this sort of uh, water magic movements. And let's just put a little, a little one here. Now, there we go. Yeah, that just looks like water coming in and just going vroom. Or something like that anyway, you know. Uh, we will now quickly grab the sand colour. You've got to do this, otherwise it'll look like it's floating. Grab the dark colour. Where are we? Somewhere there. Somewhere there. Get it reasonably inky. Now you've got to be nervous, like you've just taken your first chewing gum from the shop without paying for it, and you're so nervous that you're going to get caught. This is how shaky your hands have got to be. You've got to be nervous like that. Okay. Oh, too fat. I'm going to use a smaller script liner. That's too fat and um, not good. Yeah, I think that paint's a bit dark too, so let's try this one. Yeah, just twist it, jingle jangle it, let it break around. Just let it sit that 
down there like that. Get some more on your brush. Practice this procedure, it's fun. Oh yeah, you'll find the right um, colour one time and then you'll be spot on. It doesn't have to be a solid line all the way over it or you can break it up where perspective allows you to. Some bits can be a little bit fatter like that. And that sort of looks like um, water sitting on the sand. Now, what was I going to do? Oh, yes. I will grab. That's pretty much it. But where did I put that uh, bottle of glaze? There it is. I want to get some glaze because I want to sit the water down. So I'm going to use a flat, uh, this one here. And before I do that, we've got to finish the grass. That's more important. So we're coming down here now and we're getting our green, but more yellow green now. So we're putting more yellow into it just so we can highlight what we put up there on those um, dunes, limestone dunes. Yeah, we'll call them limestone dunes. Now, if the paint's too wet, I'll have to dry it. And leave some of that dark green within. <sighs> righto, righto, righto. Let's try and get this. When your paint's dry, you, it sits on there a lot better too. It just turns good brush strokes into nice looking ones. Oh, come on, where are you? I better look in the monitor and just see how that's looking. <laughs> I need more yellow, it's just not enough yellow. It's still looking like a mid tone green. Put a bit in there. I'm just grabbing more yellow, okay? So bear with me. I want it more yellowier than that. Still green, but more yellowy green. All right. Yeah. And you can see what the darks do for your foliage. That looks sort of coastal. Ground growth. Got some little bits dancing in there. And then leave the darks there. Look at this. You make your own pattern. Beautiful. Now see that limestone? I want to sort of come to that. On this top side, I'll sort of sit over it a little bit. Okay, leave some dark patches there. Don't go over the whole lot. And then on the underside, we'll just sort of... Leave some dark and come under it like that. Just so it looks like there's some bald spots there. And is that, yeah, that, see I can see little dots here, little stampy pattern dots. Later on I'm going to push them out because I don't like them. Oh my goodness. They're looking too blobby. Trace it down there. There we go. And if you feel there's too many bright areas, you can dull them back down with some darker green again. But I'll just have a quick look at that in the monitor there. That's 
Yep, that's looking okay. Now I want to quickly do that water, like I said. So I've got me flat, and I've got some uh, what do you call it? Glaze. Now I just want the tidbit, not much, of white in that because you can use glaze on its own. But I just like to taint it the tinsiest Luini bit with a little bit of um, white. And instead of using a knife for those nervous beginners like me, you can just have this water kissing the dark areas you put in there earlier. And it just makes the more softer, realism y lookish towards your rocks, I suppose. I'm assuming. We'll get that water line. You know how you see the artists when they're teaching and they've got their knife and they um, stamp it on? Well, this is doing the same thing, but I feel this doesn't give you that big cartoony stampy look. Go like this, then you can get your brush on its side and we can sink some of this down. This is just putting the surface on the water. I'll pull that away because it's balking me. And my water's going all crooked. <laughs> Keep them straight, so here we go. Do me little scallops if you want. This is just the surface of your water. Try not to dig into it. Sink those rocks down. This is white, just with a bit of glaze. See how it's sinking all that? Good simple painting for a beginner to practice. I do say practice, don't, if you're a beginner, Practice to get something like this happening. Don't feel you've got to be able to do it straight off the bat. Okay? It's very important to practice what you're shown. I'm just going to try and fix this up there. And over there. Geez, I wouldn't have minded some um, shimmer in there, eh? But is that looking like water? I feel it is. So it's just a bit better, wouldn't you say, than those big white lines from a knife? Mm. Hang on. Yeah, it's, it's like a lagoon, isn't it? What do you think? Now check out the links in the description below. Message me on Facebook if you're interested in grabbing some of the blending brushes that I use. And I can explain everything there. Uh, there's a link to my YouTube, not my YouTube, my art group on Facebook. Become a member there. And you get weekly updates in my group there, what's going on. All right, we're going to whack a frame on this now. Oh yeah, that don't look too shabby. It's a bit of a waterscape sky with three primary colours. You can't even see the red and the uh, yellow in there, can you? You can obviously see the blue. But anyway, just remember with a bit of practice, you can do that, all right? Now the colours will be in the description below under the links there. The size of the cans is a 30 inch by 42 inch. 12 inch by 16 inch, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking millimetres there. Um, and like I said, check out the links in the description below. Share, like and subscribe. If you like what I'm doing on my channel here, you make sure you tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.